In this video, we'll show you how to make this fleur-de-lis crest by using some of our shape creation tools and some simple vectors. For this tutorial, we're going to start off with a file that has some pre-made vectors already for us. So let's go over to open the existing file and we're going to navigate over to our tutorials folder and you'll find a file called fleur-de-lis underscore vectors dot crv 3d. Select that and open that up. Now straight away in your 2D view, you're going to see we have some vectors, like I'd mentioned, that are already pre-created for us. And this will allow us to actually use some of our modeling tools to create some shapes that we can put together to create the composite model for this fleur-de-lis. Now, a lot of the tools that we have in Aspire require vectors or cross sections, sometimes closed vectors and sometimes open vectors or several open vectors to create different components. Um, and so we're gonna demonstrate many of those in this tutorial. Now for now, let's go ahead and tile our view left and right. That way we can see our 2D view on the left-hand side and our 3D view on the right-hand side. And then we're gonna go and have a look at our job setup and make sure that it's set up appropriately for what we're gonna do. It's a single-sided job. The width and the height and thickness are all preset for us. We're gonna zero off our material surface. Our datum is set to the center. When you're modeling, it's always nice to have it set to the center. When you get around to actually creating your tooling, then you can move it at that point. Down at the bottom here, we have a section called modeling resolution. And this is important to consider when you're creating 3D components. Right now it's set to standard, and this is a good resolution if you have a very slow PC or you're not gonna be creating any 3D content at all. It gives us 1 million points within our job space to use to create our components. If we use the drop down here, you'll see there's two other settings. There's high, which gives us 2 million points, and very high, which gives us 4 million points. For this demonstration, we're just gonna set it to high for now because two million is probably enough for us to get a nice smooth model in the end. And then we can just go ahead and click okay. When getting ready to model, it's always good to take a few seconds to think about the best way to start to develop the parts that you need to create your final composite model. In this case, this floor de lis is going to be sitting on top of a button shape or a shield shape. And it's probably easiest to start from the backup, so building that particular base first and then adding to the top of that the floor de lis. So sort of knowing that and thinking about that process, let's have a look at our modeling tab. As you can see, we only have one level, and this is probably the level that was set up by default when this project was started. So to help us organize things, let's start out by renaming this base. And all of the components that we're gonna to use to create our base will go on this level. Okay, now that we have that all set up, let's go ahead and start to create the shapes that we need for the base. So to do that, we are going to select this outside oval here. Now, as you can see, as soon as I select it, it turns pink and it is a closed vector. It has no open ends. And we're gonna need that in order to use our shape creator tool over here in our modeling tab. So let's click that. Now, like I'd said a second ago, in order to use any of these tools in here or to create any shape using this tool, you need to have an actual closed vector. So that's important to remember. Now, I'm only going to touch on the parts of this form that we're going to use for this project, but if you'd like a little bit more information about all the different options that are in here, I'd highly suggest that you go have a look at the video called Create Shape Guide, and that will go in-depth into all of the different shapes that you can create using the Shape Creation Tool. But for now, we're just going to briefly go over the different shapes that you can create. We can create a curved profile or a dome shape. We can create an angular profile or a pyramid. We can create a concave profile, a smooth profile, a flat plane, or a custom vector profile. So for this back of our project, we are gonna use the dome. And once we have that selected, then we can go ahead and play with the settings that are over here. Currently right now, we can choose the angle. So if I grab this slider and move it around, you'll see instantly that in our 3D view, we generate a shape of a dome. And it's using the angle of 46.8 to create the shape. Now I can move this slider around if I'd like to up and down all the way up to 90 degrees, which gives me a quite an aggressive looking dome. I can go down below zero degrees which will give me more of a recessed dome, which is great for making 
dishes to put components in so that you can cut them below the surface of a material like a cupboard door. I can also double click on the little minus sign in front of the zero to get it to zero. I can also go ahead and type in a number if I'd like to down here. So in this case, I'm gonna type in 20 degrees and press the space bar and you'll see that in the 3D view, my shape gets updated to be 20 degrees. So it's a 20 degree angle here and that gives me a nice base, a nice shape to start adding on the rest of my components. So let's look straight down on that. Now you'll see here we have the option of adding a base height to that. I don't want to do that. The final height, we're going to make sure we have no limit set. So if you end up seeing a strange shape in your 3D view, that's probably because one of these other options have been selected. So make sure you go back to choose no limit. We're not going to add any tilt to this. We're going to make sure this is an add component and we're going to name it base. That way, when this actually gets added to our component tree, we're gonna know what it is. And I can click apply and then close. And you'll see that in my component tree, there it is, a model called base. That looks pretty nice. So I can also go ahead now and I can hide and show that base if I would like to. Now this little icon here beside the word base tells me that this is an actual add component. So this component is being added to the modeling plane which is a good thing because we want to actually build up from this, the rest of our components. Now let's go ahead and have a look at how we're gonna build the border that's gonna go around this base. And for this, we're gonna use a tool called Extrude and Weave. So let's just click that. Now in order to use the Extrude and Weave tool, we need to have a single vector, at least one vector to drive a cross section along and then we need to have a cross section vector. Again, if you're interested in more in-depth information about how this form works, then please refer to the Extrude and Weave guide where we go in-depth into all of these different options that we have here. But for now, we're gonna use this vector here and we're gonna choose to select that. And you'll see that it is turned yellow or orange. There's a green start point and you can see arrows on this and it tells us the direction of flow that we're actually gonna extrude a cross section around. So it's gonna go all around this way. Now I want to use this cross section right here. And I am going to ha now have a look at the options that are selected here. So I'm going to use a vector cross section. I don't want to create square corners and I'm not going to sweep between spans. I'm going to choose this to be an add component. We're going to skip over these two options right here because again, we don't need to worry about those for right now. And we're going to call this border. And as soon as I hit apply, you'll see in the 3D view, I'll get a border added to my base. And that looks great. Let's go ahead now and close this down. Now let's have a little look at our component tree. So we have the base that's sitting right on top of our modeling plane. And to that, because this is an add component, the border is being added directly to that. So you can see I can hide and I can close that or I can hide my base. I can put my base back into if I want to. When modeling something with multiple components, it's important to keep in mind how the component tree works. So it works from a bottom top method with inside of a level and the levels work from a bottom to top as well. So in this case, we only have one level. So we have a base being at the bottom of our stack and then a border is being added to the top of that. And that's obvious when we turn on and off our actual border. Now, when we get around to having more than one level in this job, we'll, we'll have a look at how the levels affect your composite model. Now that we have a base that we're happy with, let's go ahead and start to work on the actual fleur-de-lis. So to do that, we're gonna right click on the base level over here and we're gonna insert a new level. We're gonna right click on that again and we're gonna rename that level fleur-de-lis. And then we'll click down here to accept that. Now we're gonna go ahead and hide our base because we don't wanna see that right now and we'll minimize the components list that's on that particular base. Now, as we can see in the center of our base vectors that we used a minute ago, we have a bunch of different vectors that we can use to create the actual fleur-de-lis. So to start with, we have this closed vector in the center and we have some open vectors here and then we have three cross sections over here. 
To get started, let's go ahead and create the shape for the middle. So let's select that vector, that closed vector, and go back to our Create Shape tool. Again, we're going to use the dome. And in this case, we're going to type in 60 degrees. We're not going to have a base height. There'll be no limit to that. We're not going to use any tilt. It's going to be an add component, and we'll call this center. And we can click apply. And you'll see right away in our 3D view, we have a nice looking shape for the center of our fleur de lis, which looks really great. Look back down on that again, and then we'll close that down. Okay, the next component that we're going to need is going to be this side shape. Now you'll see that we only have one set of vectors for that because we're going to create this shape and we're going to mirror it across so we have two copies of that. And also you might note that this vector on the outside of this side shape actually goes inside of our center component. And what that will allow us to do is actually merge the side in with the center and have it look really nice in the end, opposed to having a slight gap potentially. So in order to create this side, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our two rail sweep option. So let's go ahead and select that. And we're gonna need two drive rails. So to start with, we are gonna select this inside vector first and hold down our shift key, select this outside vector, and we're gonna say use selection. You'll see that we have a common start point. These aren't connected. It's just that the two start points are sitting right over top of each other. So there's only one green dot. If these are separated, there would be two green dots. And we have arrows to tell you the direction of flow that we're gonna be extruding our cross section along. If you'd like more information on our two rail sweep, I would highly recommend again that you take a look at our two rail sweep guide, which will actually go through all of the different options you have here in your two rail sweep dialog. Now we need a cross section, so let's select that. And we're gonna tell our two rail sweep dialog that we don't want to scale cross section with width. We don't want to sweep between spans. We don't want to give it an exact height to scale to. We want to choose a merge component and we're going to call this side and we're going to click apply. And we can have a look at the result in our 3D composite model. And you'll see that there's a couple things that could be done better. First of all, the cross section is actually the wrong way. We want the high point to be on this side and the dip to be on the inside. And it has a lot to do with the vectors and the order that we selected these in. We selected the inside one first and then the outside one. Now we've set up in the software an easy way for us to flip that around. So if we hover over either one of these drive rails and I right click on it, I can choose swap rail order. And you'll see that these get swapped. And if I re-click apply, you'll see what happens in the 3D view. We get the shape that we initially wanted now, one other thing that you'll see is we have chosen over here to not to scale cross section with width. So we get a constant height all the way around this shape, which is the same height as the top of this vector here. Now to make it look a little bit better, it'd be nice if we could vary that height depending on the distance between these two vectors. And so if we choose scale cross section with width and then re-select apply, you'll see the result now is something a little bit more appealing in our 3D view. And I think that's what we were looking for in the end. So let's look straight down on that and then we're gonna hit close. And now we have that component. In our component tree, well, you'll see that we have the center, it's being added to our modeling plane. And then we have the side is being merged into the center. Now I said the, that the center was being added to the modeling plane because we actually have our base component turned off. If that was turned on, then the result of this layer here, which would be the center and the side merged into it, would be added to the result of the base because this is an add layer. Okay. Now we're going to take this component and we're going to mirror it across the center of our job. So with that selected, we're going to choose to mirror selected objects. In this case, we're going to make sure we have flip about center job selected here. We're going to make sure that we have create a mirrored copy clicked and then we can go ahead and flip horizontally and you'll see that in our 3d view now we have something that looks more like a fleur-de-lis let's close this down and off click okay the last part of the fleur-de-lis that we need to make is the tie that holds all this together in order to do that we are going to use our two rail sweep option again and we're going to start out by using one cross section and then we're going to add in a second cross section 
So let's just go ahead now and choose our two rail sweep. And we are going to select both of these drive rails. We're gonna hold down our shift key to get the second one. Use selection. And to start with, we're gonna use this smaller cross section here. And we'll select that. Now you're gonna to wanna to note that we have our two green endpoints showing here, and these are both flowing in the proper direction. And if not, we can right click on those and we could choose reverse rail to get it going in the proper direction for us. Or if they're in the wrong order, then we could also go ahead and swap our rail order like we did for the side of the floor de lis Okay, so now that we have that selected, we're gonna look down through our form here, and we are going to not scale cross section with width, we are gonna sweep between spans and we are gonna merge this in and we're gonna call this tie. And we'll click apply. Now in our 3D view, you're gonna see what happens. We get this nice shape here, but there's a bit of a problem. The actual shape isn't rising up like we want it to do. We could change the shape height a bit of that component in the end, but that still wouldn't give us a nice smooth sort of dome shape going on there. So in order to achieve that, we need to add in this second cross section. So what we're gonna to wanna to do to start with is to tell the software where the first cross section belongs. And so it belongs at the first and at the end, and you'll see that it automatically puts the end one in for us. And then we're gonna select this cross section and drop it right in the center. And you'll see we get this red line here. So this means that this yellow dot is gonna be here of the cross section, and the other end will be down here. And we are actually going to have a nice transition from this little shape up to this big shape, and then from this big shape back down to this little shape. And let's take a look again over in our two rail sweep options. And we're gonna leave everything the same, but we're gonna click apply and see what happens. And we get is this nice shape in the end. That looks really, really good, I think. You'll see that we have the, at this end, we've got that first dome shape that's right there, the little one. You can kind of see it right there because these endpoints don't come together. And it gives us this nice sort of um, ribbon look with this dip in the middle and then back down to the other side. And I'm really happy with that. Now we also could check out what happens if we select to scale cross sections with width. Let's turn that on and click apply. And that looks equally as good, except for we get this little bit of a seam in the center here. So we don't want that. We're gonna unclick that and click apply. And there we have it. And let's close that down and look straight down in our view and see if we're happy with everything there. This looks really great. There's only one little last change that I think that we should make. And that is, remember when we zoomed in and we saw the end profile here kind of showing, it ends kind of abruptly. And it'd be nice if we could kind of smooth that over a bit. So let's look back on this down straight on top of this again. Let's maximize that. Let's zoom into that part of the tie. And we're gonna do some really basic sculpting, okay? Once we have this selected, we can choose the sculpting tool. And then we're gonna make sure we have a smooth tool set up. Now, if you're interested in more about the sculpting tool, we also have the Lioness um, sculpting video that you can watch, which shows you all of these different tools in depth if you'd like to take a look at that. So what I wanna do is we're gonna, as I said, use a smooth tool. We're gonna to turn the diameter a bit. We're gonna leave the strength quite low. And we're just gonna go ahead and fix the end just a little bit like that. And that just kind of rounds those down a bit. If I go to my twiddle view here, I can go ahead and rotate around the part so you can see how we kind of just smooth that out a bit. It looks a little nicer in the end, and that looks really good. Let's look straight back down on that again. We're gonna accept that, so we're gonna click Keep and then click OK, and there we have it. That looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and retile our views again, and let's have a look at our composite model when we turn back on our base. So let's turn back on our base again and we'll see what happens. So the results of our Fleur de Lis level here are being added to the base level results. And so we see us building up our base first and then the Fleur de Lis gets added on top of that. And I think that looks pretty decent. There's one last little thing that we might wanna consider doing is that the gap at the top of our Fleur de Lis and the gap at the bottom isn't all that great. Now, this could be a good setup if you're gonna put like a house number or some text down there or maybe another detail. But for us, I think we're gonna to want to actually make this fit in a little bit better. So we can go ahead now and select this center bit. 
We're going to click it again so we get our transform handle showing. And I'm just going to pull it down, just stretch it down a bit to where I think it needs to be. And that looks okay. Now, when I did that, of course, it means that all of the extra details we have here aren't centered anymore. So let's go back to our 2D view and holding down our shift key, we can just go ahead and select the two sides and the tie. And I'm going to use my nudge keys on my keyboard. That's just my arrow keys and just scoot it down into place where it should belong like that. Maybe right there, it looks pretty decent. Up one, there we have it. And we'll off click everything. So there we have our end composite model, which looks rather nice. I like that. And if we wanted to really get a sense of what's going on, we could go up and maximize our 3D view and use our shadow shading to get a good sense of the shading that might happen when we finish this off in real material. Now that concludes this video. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned a little bit about how to get started modeling some different components.